<laughs> watchers and listeners. This is Felix Rückert. Is that pronounced? Yes, yes. Rückert. Felix Rückert, um, who is the uh, owner, proprietor, dweller, head person here at Schwelle Seven, where we have father figure. Father figure. Okay, that works too. Um, here at Twella, and uh, it's a fantastic space. This is the place you wish you had in your town, except maybe the CSPC. You guys in Seattle, you may have a place that's close to this, but everybody else, this is really, really nice. And uh, I'm wondering, how, you, how did you manage to get this? How did I manage to get I, I was lucky in a way because I was not really looking for a space, but um, a friend moved in here and they said, why don't you want to come here too and open your space? And, and then I started thinking about the idea to open my own space. Wow. And then I did it. I don't know. And it's very, it? it came to me. That's, that's great. Huh. How long has it been open? Uh, five years now. Five years, okay. Yeah. And uh, I actually can remember reading about this online because of the fact that you were starting to do both dance and bondage together. And, you know, go figure. With, with great answer. I actually like dance. Um, sure. Uh, so. Was that the primary goal at the very beginning? Was to integrate dance and uh, well, a little BDSM? bit. Let's say I made I made uh, I put elements of BDSM play in my artistic work as a choreographer, okay. and um, that raised some difficulties. Yeah, also like like Germany is not as uh, tolerant as people might think. I know. Uh, so it got me also a bit in trouble on the artistic side, and so but I felt a bit like alienating from, from the art world and it was just an, a way to say okay now I want my space I can do my, my things because like it, of course these problems manifested sometimes in, in spaces where I wanted to present work were a bit afraid of the king's side of it etc mm -hmm. so it just came together you know, as, a, as an evolution and I said okay here I can do what I want and that's basically what happens here I mean, there's dance stuff happening and BSM stuff happening and it, it mingles also with each other, of course. Yeah, I think there was more sex going on at this guru than there have been at most other ones. Ah, both during the day and during the, the play party. Yeah, afterwards. I haven't been to any other. <laughs> yeah, group. but um, um, it was also more sex than at other events. I don't know. Just sometimes it just happens. Hmm. Yeah. Sexy guru Berliners. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I said Berliner and just talked yeah. about donuts again. Yeah. Um, so the. Uh, you said your choreographic work. What is your yeah. background in, in terms of, well, where's your work in choreography and what is your background in kink? How did you get involved in kink? Uh, well, well, choreography really comes back like I started as a, as a dancer training when I was a young man and then, you know, the, the whole classic ballet thing mm -hmm. and then went to contemporary dance, went to Tanz Theater, German Tanz Theater. Oh, and okay. I worked with Pina Bausch. Yeah, Pina, I was going to say Pina Bausch, wow. Then after that, actually, <laughs> after Pinovage, I started then doing my own work for about 15 years, just choreographing mm -hmm. and, and doing pieces and touring. Uh, about that time, when I started doing choreography, I also got into King, so it's also like some 15 years ago now. And I did several pieces that had kind of these these influences, um, more maybe more less less obviously in the beginning, and then also sometimes more. Openly later, yeah, and and then I also also got a bit sick actually of traveling and touring because I was really very yeah. much traveling in the last fifteen years and and felt the need also to have a a home a bit more and um, yeah also maybe maybe a need more of something that has has its own like a location in a way not just you know being right. other people's location but. Uh, in the in the sense of having something that grows uh -huh. also as a as a network. Yeah, you really seem to have a community, community here. I've yeah. noticed that. Yeah. You, you, there's there's a Schwelle family. Right, there's uh, a Schwelle. Yeah. Right. What, what does Schwelle mean anyway? Schwelle means threshold. 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 That's the most uh, simple translation. Uh -huh. uh, it's very often used metaphorically in okay. German. Yeah, because it's also a bit of old term for this place of the door. Mm -hmm. But it's very much used metaphor metaphorically as uh, in the in-between place. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, because and it's interesting because it's a place. It's not a border. Ah, okay. Yeah, which which was actually came together like this because the street here is called Uferstraße, mm -hmm. which is the border street. Oh, <laughs> that's, that works out pretty well. And uh, the number six, 
you know, border, so it's border street six. So uh, one of the first ideas was to call it border six. Mm -hmm. But in German that sounds a bit like uh, sex at a river or something. <laughs> 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 Because border is mostly also connotated with, with the border, the bank actually, bank of a river. Okay. Yeah. And I also didn't like this, this idea of the border. And I'm also quite interested in, in um, the, the concept of liminal theory by right. Victor Turner, mm -hmm. like the liminal experiences, and, and the Latin work word for Schwelle is actually liman. Okay. So liminal comes from this, yes, actually this place, and as, as Turner being. also describes it, and I found interesting that the, the, the Schwelle or the liman or the threshold is not a separation, but it's a link. Yeah? It's, it's the place between hmm. two places. So you don't have to decide between this side or the other side, but you can be in between. And so, if I, I'm pardon me, I'm taking this too literally, but do you see Schwelle as being the place in between the your dance world and your BDSM world? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But even also extended, it's it's a, it's a, um, not just it goes to art in general. So there's BDSM and art, but there's also sometimes like even even things that have nothing to do with um, BDSM directly, but they connect mm -hmm. with each other. Also, yeah, yeah. You do a lot of uh, work with Tantra here too, correct? A, a lot not. Okay. Actually, there's only one, only one workshop I do, with, which has oh. this tantric side. And this is this contract and tantra. Uh, say that again? Okay. Contact improvisation and tantra. Oh, contact improvisation tantra, which and is the one that was just exactly. before the group. Exactly. That's right. the only tantra event, really, I would call it tantra event, because she refers to her work as tantra. Mm -hmm. And her work is, is uh, Kashmirian tantra, Okay. which is a bit different than what people normally think of tantra, where the, the sexuality is a very big part in the Kashmirian Tantra is more meditation and movement. I mean, they work with sexual energy, but the practices, practices are much more um, not so sexual. It's a lot of massage, there's a lot of massages and, and meditation practices which work with, you know, the genitals and they include the genitals as a body part. And that works, um, that works well with the contact improvisation. Cool. Because the two sexual Tantra, I, I don't think they make so much connection to contact improvisation, in my, in my view. Yeah. So what is your connection with rope? I mean, aside from the fact that yes. I, I saw you in a really amazing inverted suspension with Shadow oh. the other night, um, but what, what is your own relationship to rope on? Yes, well, the thing is, like, like um, actually, I, I started with ex exploring also my king side with rope, like many people, like, like, like really early, just tying up my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. Yes, uh, like I still do. And then I had I had a time I was traveling often to Japan for for mm -hmm. dance reason in, in to, to choreograph there or to teach there. And then I, I got a bit in contact with the with bondage there, mostly also okay. from pictures and magazines okay. and some people. And and then started um, first myself, like just copying from what I saw on pictures. Um, and I did a very early installation already in 1999, which is totally inspired by, by bondage. Like, yeah. how I see it in a very primitive way. <laughs> Probably, but just where I tied up people in positions. Um, and people were just like, it was just a big installation, like mostly had seven or eight dancers, and they just were tied up like in, in seven, eight images. And the, people, the audience just could walk through. And okay. Through. And it was really this idea uh, of, um, Reversing also this, this the concept of dance, you know, where the, the audience sits still and the dancers move. Okay. Making the, the dancers gotcha. still and the audience move. And nice. um, in this, I mean, they had these bondage images. I worked with raw, but also with other materials mm -hmm. as a mix. Um, I changed sometimes the materials. And, um, and the dancers had kind of mental choreographies. I mean, there was a, they, had, they, had, they were not just in the raw, they also had like these kind of images and, and, and processes and very minimal uh, changes of, of bodily state where they went through over the hour. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was a piece that was quite successful. People liked that. Like they really were fascinated by the still. And that for me also was like when I started bondage I started more active um, because actually the, the, the side of the model was pretty frightening for me. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like being tied up was pretty 
scary because I'm also more the, the side of the control freaks, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and I also learned, understood how that is connected to my, my dance side because uh, I, I see this phenomena with love dancers, which the love dancers come here and, and they get really easily nervous with being tied up. And there's something with the psychology of the dancer, also, who likes yeah. to move, to, which is nice, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of flexibility and the kind of. But it also has a bit something to do maybe with avoiding, avoiding stillness, avoiding to be there. Yeah, and probably the perception of if you can't move, you can't avoid injury, you can't change the way you're going to go. So. Something like this. So for me, yeah. it was in the, in the beginning, it was quite quite uh, difficult, and but I met also the right people, and 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 then really wow, I started enjoying it also very much the the, the passive side. So now I'm practicing both. Gotcha. Yeah, you had um, Haji Mike Kanoko, Kanoko here mm -hmm. uh, just a couple weekends ago. Yeah, yeah. you could have yeah. just you know kept him in the closet and. Stuck around with the guru, you know, that would have been nice. Yeah. They didn't need him in that way. Yeah. yeah, and then it started like um, in, in 2004, I started Explore, this festival mm -hmm. I organize each year. And then the first Explorer, I really invited Steve, Osada Steve, mm -hmm. um, because at, at, the, at the time that was like the person everybody knew, and he was German and he's from Berlin. Oh, yeah, that would have been He's from Berlin, so he liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he came anyway. So that's where I met Osai Steve, and then he came here also teaching a bit in the beginning. And then I invite like regularly guys from Japan, right. because I really was interested about also what is uh, what is really Japanese bondage, because uh, I mean there's, there's a lot of these discussions in, in it. Like the Germans take everything very serious, so you know they wanted Japanese bondage, and of course they wanted to do it right. So right. It's It'll be actual kind of Japanese bondage, right? Very, very dogmatic discussions about what's Japanese and yeah. what is not, and and um, I was always a bit like hesitant with this very dogmatic approach because I, what I saw in Japan was ex extremely varied and individual. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, um, so I just got a bit very curious also about this and. and um, I'm also yeah really curious to develop that, and that's mm -hmm. why Hajime. This is one of the younger people yes. in in he Japan, and he's really very interesting because he's this is in a different generation. So he's mm -hmm. not at all dogmatic, even so he's very traditional in a way. He can do all that stuff, but he also does other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he was also like in this this workshop. Also one day he was teaching like really more traditional than traditional, which means then no carabines, no right. like what they what he said they what the rope bondage did till the fifties mm -hmm. because he just was working in Japan now with a very old master who's showing a bit this. Which is very interesting, which is um Actually, much more rough for the models. Also, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I actually like that kind, of, that style better than I like the whole carabiner shoulder stuff. Um, I, I like I like less mm -hmm. less um, gear. Yeah, lot, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, good friends of mine, like to use the pulley systems and things like that, mm -hmm. and that's fine for them. Um, but I prefer just the rope and the beam and yeah. the body. And yeah. That's that's what does it for me. Yeah. But it's really to say with problem. this, with the, yeah, yeah, it's it's also, but for the models, it's really some stuff is really like, you yeah. know, yeah. And it was, and then you see also that like what we see, I like what say the more modern Japanese bondage is also done in, in more in respect for the models, you know, in mm -hmm. a way like keeping them yeah. alive. Because and uh, we had also Arisu Go here, mm -hmm. and he said also he told like he started that in the seventies, eighties in Japan. Yeah. And they said in the beginning they had in Japan they had no idea about suspensions, you know, they just did it for photography. I mean mm -hmm. they, they were like holding the girl up, holding the rope, like over a second, just <laughs> yeah. taking the picture. And it, yeah. it just like this this what we see as the suspension techniques which we use, like what Steve used, and just that's all stuff that's very re recent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right, and yet there's this idea that you know it's a traditional way of suspension and you know, it's kind of silly. Yeah, it's so, um, so. But it's interesting because it, it's, it's it's also interesting to see that rope got so popular like in the last ten years. It's yeah, incredible. hasn't it been strange? It's incredible. It's, uh, I think yeah. it's because of my, my podcast, really. I guess that's so. what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the um, I really the grew here. First of all, thank you for letting it grew happen here, um, letting it uh, take place. Because I know it's always funny when I when I meet someone who owns a space. Mm -hmm. um, 
if I ran into this at the, the, the Crucible in D.C., uh, and I was talking with uh, Fraser, who owns it, and he's asking me to explain what the GRU is. And it's hard to explain if you haven't been to one. And so he took a chance, and you took a chance, and said, well, this sounds interesting. So now that you've been to one, what do you think? What, what is your, and feel free to slam it. And, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Um, what I feel about the group, I mean, I like, uh, anyway, I like uh, formats which um, link a, a practical side and a technical side to also a playful side. You know? mm -hmm. Because I think it's uh, the, the techniques and the, the, the ideas and the discussions, you know, they help not just proliferate information, but they also help to create a safe space. They, they, help to create connection between the people and that makes a lot of plays and, and stuff much more easy and much more possible, you know, instead mm -hmm. like um, the pure play part is where everybody comes with his kind of uh, meta SM personality, which sometimes like yeah. make connection much more difficult, you know. Hmm. So so I like these kind of formats. I mean this is what the what the place is about. You know, we have yeah, it a fit, lot of workshops here really well, and we also really have nice. a lot of parties here and there's also a real but there's right. a clear separation also between okay, this is a workshop space and it's casual and people come to one, but the, the party space is also a different space where people dress up and that, both that connect. Nothing. I yeah. didn't I didn't know this actually until like after the party. Mm. Um, but I love your, your your process of saying you have to dress up and therefore, here's this costume closet, and pick something out and, and wear it, mm. um, because it, it's interesting. In in the uh, U.S. leather community, one of the things, that one of the issues that's been going on is the idea that, well, you sh if you're you're going to be really, you should be wearing the the leathers, you should be wearing the outfit. And mm. the problem is that mm. makes it somewhat of a a privileged minority who can afford mm. that mm. kind of gear. Oh, okay. But if you say to people, yes, you do need to dress up. You can't just mm. wear jeans and a t-shirt. But hey, I've got stuff for you if you can't afford it. That is genius. I like that idea. No, yeah, this is this, like it was simple in a way because it's mostly like old costumes, and then now mm -hmm. just also people bring their stuff here. Right. But the the, the starting point of this was really um, like like the fetish scene in Berlin, or it started really in ni 1995 with, mm -hmm. with the, when the Kit Club opened. And that was a, the first club, I mean, it was like it came out of the Goa trance movement. Right. I mean, they had SM clubs at the time already, but like very hidden and only one or two in the winter. But the, the, that uh, Kit Kat became very famous. And they had a very strict policy on outfits. Yeah. And that was, uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, there was always a lot of dressing up in the when you go out, but they were really into the, like, the fetish outfit and this new at the time. And, so people inherited it and, and it created really something fantastic. And for me this was always very familiar, coming from theatre and dance. Mm -hmm. you know, I know the, the power of costume and the magic of that. And, uh, but in the last 15 years this got, in Berlin, it got a bit loosened up. Yeah? Even at Kitka Club itself, now everybody can, can walk in just with jeans and yeah. you know, maybe take a t-shirt off. So um, I wanted to re-establish that. And that also makes... Um, the place a bit specific and, and unique in Berlin because mm -hmm. Berlin a lot of clubs also you can go pretty casual also the king clubs is not a big deal anymore you know just people put a little bit of black and that's the, another uniform in a way right. because also the dress code here it's not about uh, LLL we call that uh, latex leather lack it's the lack it's the LLL it's latex leather what, what is lack Luck is this kind of shiny material, which is similar to lattice, but more made of okay. plastic. Um, something like PVC. P yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. PVC, yeah. stuff. That's the Interesting. Usually they say LLS or not. Okay. Yeah. No. But um, actually, dress code here is is it's more about mm, creating a different character. Right. Yeah. And if a banker comes here in in jeans and t-shirt, that would probably That's also fit in. Yeah, yeah. You know? See that. Um, and and I like this openness about the costume. No, I, I like fetish stuff, but it's also nice sometimes if, if people yeah. come with very just original stuff, you know, right. specific. It just should be just be a just support to get them in a different behavior, basically. Right. That's one well, of the, the codes for the parties, and there's a kind of kind of which was on the groove was more loose. Normally, we even have the coach of, of uh, no small talk. Ah, the yeah. Small, no small talk allowed. Right. So it's also quite quite interesting. 
and yeah. then, you know, help people deal with that. But I, I actually slipped up on that myself with the way when doing, they're doing aftercare uh, with uh, my uh, Miss Sparks, who mm -hmm. I just suspended, and uh, we didn't realize that we were slipping into regular conversation about like work and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that mm -hmm. was uh, yeah. that was a, a faux pas on my part. Um, <laughs> the uh, the other thing that you brought to the GRU that I think was a very uh, a brilliant uh, example was the um, ongoing erotic dishwashing exhibit, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, an invitation to people to come into the kitchen and, uh, and wash dishes and help keep the kitchen going in an erotic fashion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as you said, you were disappointed in the... Uh, Participation. No, I was joking a bit. Yeah, it was it was actually course, pretty awesome. Because, yeah, uh, you had some hot people in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I think I think that would actually work yeah. in other groups um, because there's yeah, enough there's the, enough people that like love to yeah. fetishize the idea of you know fifties housewife or just an apron and heels mm -hmm. or you know the houseboy the cabana boy thing like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I think that's a. I think basically it's it's a dominant submission game because it's it's not as I mean I like also like really people that. that wash the dishes, that's really something. Yeah. Know, it turns me off, when they, especially if they wash my dishes. Yes. Um, but like uh, what I did there and I tried to do, we did it in other events also similar, that's why I like the kitchen stuff, is it's really more a dominant submission game in, in the sense of um, eroticizing precision and, and you would call it maybe high protocol also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so that. you know, it goes a bit in that direction yeah. for me because I really like and that that's kind of things triggers to be me too. Just well so that, yeah. done. And I'm also like the food preparation, you know, I like yeah. when people prepare food really carefully and, and you know, cut cut the, the, the carrots in forms of little cocks maybe, things like that, you know. I mean right. Yeah, it's just something that, that, that turns me on this like um, precise work on attention to detail. Yeah, attention to detail, yeah. especially if it's stuff like food or stuff like you know cleanliness, which is destroyed immediately after. So there's really oh yeah, good point. Yeah, there is no you know it's not it's hopeless. Yeah. Ah uh, yeah. And of course, in the kitchen you have the these things like there's the ephemeral, and then in the kitchen, of course, you have also the. The decay, you know, you have the garbage, you have all this, um, uh, how do you call it, the, um, the disgust as a theme, you know, a little bit. I mean, there trash, is, there's yeah, trash, waste. there is waste, there is decay, there is uh, mm. dirt, and, and so you have all the options, you know, you can create a beautiful, you can, can make it a, a humiliation game, of course, and, and so the kitchen offers all these possibilities to play with people, and, and and in this, so we not not just had the people dishwashing, you know, I mm -hmm. had a guy clean the window or... Yeah, that was the window washing that really caught my eye, the way he was going yeah. slow. I mean, he was washing that window the way I've seen some people like worship boots, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. For, for fetish, uh, foot fetish things, mm -hmm. so... And this is also this, I mean, that's again, it's, it's the choreography part of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I gave him mostly the indications to, to work with different times, uh, speeds, mm -hmm. like w if he has his normal working speed, if it would be 100%, so I, I try to get him sometimes on 120% or 200% or 50% or 10%, so he had a kind of schedule huh. of, of working with times, and, 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 and I also, he was the kind of guy also that worked, it was really yeah. something that, wow, he just fascinated him, I and mean, I was surprised because everybody was clean. One and a half hours. Yeah, he was. He was, so nice. he was um, there for a while. And that's for me at that, but that's of course totally a power, a power thing for me. I mean, mm -hmm. enjoy, enjoy that. The power side of it, you know, or yeah, yeah in other. The other side is the. Yeah. Well, it's something that I think uh, you know, kind of like nap time was something that has been added to grooves, and mm. even the the pancakes in the morning was mm. kind of an add on, and that's yeah. something I think also that is a. A good idea, the erotic, Absolutely. erotic cleaning. Absolutely. Now, also, the thing is really like like um, food is is extremely emotional and personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you want to trigger people, food is the thing because it's it's extremely essential, and the way what you eat and how you eat and when you eat, it it has a lot to do with, with identity. It has mm -hmm. a lot to do with nourishing. You know, it, people if you don't give them their food for two days, they freak out. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's, it's, 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 uh, we had this, we had it on another project here where we experimented with food on that. 
and it was extreme how how quickly people like got got triggered. You know, if you with simple things, you know, just announcing like, okay, now we, for the next four hours there will be no food, just drinking, you know. And they gave that. And everybody said, can we eat something? Yeah. <laughs> before it starts. <laughs> can, yeah. can we start in ten minutes and eat something? And then very funny. <laughs> and nice little triggering idea. It's, yeah, and there is uh, basically there's also two, um, like uh, if it comes to a fetish thing, there's two sides of it. I mean, there's the, there's the, the nourishing side and this side of plentitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for people, it can be a kick to be nurtured and even overfeed and you know all of this like, which is of too much food, you know, which can also be then the kind of really which tends to be the way things happen in America. Yeah, over the body and the whole. Oh, you yeah, know, the mess side. Splashing, yeah. But then a lot of people, other people, and that's also my side, they're more um, turned on by the scarcity or the, the S cases of it. You know, like hmm. to make people eat uh, one fig in, in 30 minutes, you know, or let your slave yourself serve, peel, a, peel a grape or something. Yeah, like yeah. This kind of. You know, Plus, really appreciating this, the minimal. And, and, and you had um, the. the the fact that you took the time to have your the people cooking, um, like I specifically remember the the man, mm. young man who was was cho he was chopping pepper, mm. um, and in the finely ground thing, you know, it's the kind of thing that normally, well, not normally, but a lot of people would just take it, toss it in the food processor, push a button, mm. zzz, it's done. And he was mm. finely chopping it and chopping and chopping, mm. and there was uh, something very viscerally um, sensual about, mm. you know. Attractive young man, sharp knife, cutting board, the pepper you're slowly getting ground into something and knowing that that's going into this this creation later on. Um, I, I think it's the same type of satisfaction that people get um, when they decide they want to start making their own rope. You know, they're, they're sitting there in their basement, you know, with a drill and, and winding up this stuff mm -hmm. with the thought in their head that later on this is going mm -hmm. to be helping someone I care about beautifully have mm -hmm. an orgasm or, or you know this kind of sure. experience so um, it's interesting that that, that mm -hmm. can be found in so many different things yeah, sure. I think that's the whole I mean the whole I think the whole the whole king thing is about it's about slowing down sex no in a way slowing down sex interesting slowing down sex no you're not just into, you know rather than just going in just there just going there and, yeah. and, you know make a lot of ceremonies around and sometimes yeah. they even forget about the sex yeah I Being know that's true, true. true yeah and, As I um, say, that's something that uh, happens and a lot. And that's food is very similar, you know. And, hmm. yeah, the slowing, and I don't know, it's, it's just, you, know, you slow down your food and you eat less and still get more. You, know? you get more sex. Also, I mean, yeah. yeah, also, yeah. And, and um, there's also this question anyway, you know, like what, what we eat or what we, how we, you know. How much in the food is really what is in the food, or how much is in the preparation? Hmm. And the, the attitude towards the food. And yeah, the attitude. Is this right. something I found is it something you just yeah. Yeah. shove yeah. in your mouth while you're doing something else right. versus yeah. paying attention to it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's very and it's very primal. It's very archaic. You know, it's yeah. so fucking primitive. You know, like this. It was very. Yeah. It was very. It's interesting how big a part the kitchen was of this group, and more so than the normal. Yeah, I think absolutely you should take take that. Yeah, just into consideration. I mean, the pancakes already is there. Also. That's and true. You that's are true. there, and it's kind of it's a great gesture. You know? When I read that in the program, it's it's, it's clear. You know, you start the thing, and you mess uh, mess people up, and the next morning you make happen pancakes. Which and is, make it all better. Yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's a gesture, which is it's mm -hmm. it's just lovely, you know, to do that. And, okay, I, and I have the same like with the space. You know, like uh, this, from the beginning here, I always like make food for the people I like, cook. And, mm -hmm. Um, and the, the funny thing is also in the, in the beginning often I thought, okay, it's 50 people, I have to cook for, cook for 50 people. And then again you go into making something massive and it's not fun anymore. True. If you peel potatoes. So now I rather do a lot of little dishes <laughs> and they yeah. always like run out. Right? And those people come. Yeah, I but never got any of soup. The soup was many then. And it's more fun for me, but in the end it's also more... more in a way, it makes something. I don't know. It's just people were really happy with it. Yeah, yeah, they were really happy. With it. I got a lot of good feedback on it. So. Well, thank you very much for taking us out here and for taking the time now to, to talk about Schwella. Um, if you guys, what's the website? Is like Schwella dot Schwella seven dot de Schwella seven dot de. Yeah. Um, and uh, you should look online. Look at the upcoming workshops. I'll tell you right now, Berlin is totally worth the trip.
uh, not just to come here, but the rest of the city. I've been spending time here. It's fantastic. Love this city. Um, so you definitely created some magnificent here.